Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it the giant vacuum cleaner because I feel like it is sucking all the money in. As people talk about in these in these interviews, they say, well, you know, I got nowhere else to put the money. We got nowhere else to go. It reminds me of that, you know, uh, Richard Gere screaming, I got nowhere else to go and the officer and a gentleman. So we'll see what happens with this, how much further this market's really got to go. We're going to focus on the NASDAQ composite uh, today. And uh, then we'll take a look at one of the key indicators, look at the semiconductors. All right, so here's the NASDAQ. It's almost going vertical. And uh, we're getting a divergence in here. Now divergence can sometimes last for quite a while. So we've got divergence on the RSI. We've got divergence on DI+. Plus. And uh, so we're keeping an eye on those. But the main thing is watching for the price action to break down. And right now, it's it's not doing it. It was up 31.81 on Friday. We kind of zoom out a little or zoom in a little bit, I guess, is the right way to say it. We continue to just trend very strongly above that 10-day uh, uh, moving average. The ADX is sitting at uh, 44.27. And many folks look at ADX as trending when it's above 20. Uh, sometimes when it starts trending and rising above 15, it you know it's but for sure above 20. And here we are at 44. So we're you know we're all you gotta do is look at the chart and know we're in a super strong trend. Now for the week, how did it look? Here's the look for the week, up 210 points on the Nasdaq Composite. And yes, ever all these major indices are sitting at new all-time highs. So that's nothing new. Every time we close at a new, a new higher close, we're getting all-time highs. Okay, so that's the picture. So how much further do we have to go in this? Let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture. We're going to start off with the uh, the daily view. Now I think that uh, I think the odds favor to me anyway that the fourth wave, the major fourth wave, up from March 2009. It was completed here in December of 2018, and that we're in the fifth and final wave. Okay, and so right now the the wave structure, the way this fits the best, is an ending diagonal pattern, and an ending diagonal pattern is a series of zigzags in here. Okay, so right now the one that's been a little bit complicated is this third wave, and you know, but I do think that we're doing you know a zigzag in A B C. And that we're in this this C wave, this uh, last leg up. So what many times what you do is you compare C to A, and we're looking at Fibonacci relationships of C versus A. Well, you know we've stretched beyond equality. We're up here in the 138 to 161.8 percent window. Could we continue stretching this far? Yeah, we could. But when you drill down and take a look at you know beneath the covers in here, let me show a little more detail. Here's the wave count I think is going on within the C wave. I think we're in that fifth wave. I think we've got five waves in here. I think we had a an expanded flat for wave four and that we're doing a fifth wave. So I've got it labeled as if the fifth wave has finished. That may or may not be true. We're getting divergence here and this we're again we're looking at the 195 minute chart why 195 minutes? Because that divides the day evenly into two separate bars, three three hours and 15 minutes each. OK, so that that helps with that. And here's uh, let me give a little more detail in here and look at this. So now within this last leg up, I'm looking at the waves and here's here's this fifth wave that I think we're looking at. And I could, you know, we could possibly have, you know, one, two, three, sideways, four, and we're, you know, working this fifth wave. Again, when you drill down, you're, you're seeing this divergence a little clearer in here. So I think we're getting close. Could we continue to push a little bit higher? Yes, but I think we're getting very, very close. So that's what we're looking at. That's the picture on the LA wave for the NASDAQ composite. And then, you know, okay, I'm back on the daily. Let me get rid of some of the detail. OK, so then where do we go from here? Once this third wave finishes, starts to break down, we roll over. OK, I'm expecting a fourth wave that should be a zigzag back down and overlap wave one. OK, 
okay? And because this is now turned into an expanding ending diagonal pattern, because wave 3 is longer than 1, I'm expecting wave 4 to be longer than wave 2. But the key is it needs to come down and overlap wave 1. Well, then once we get this pullback, I'm expecting another push to the upside for a fifth and final wave. So that's the picture. That's the way it looks right now. We'll see how the waves unfold and see how much further. I mean, this is starting to have that feel of January 2018. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. I did want to mention, too, you know, the equity put to call ratio. And I think I talked about that last week. I'm looking back at my notes. I did. Well, the, here recently, I think it was this last week, we the 10 day uh, put to call ratio hit a nine year low. It was the lowest reading on the 10 day equity put to call ratio in nine years. So we're getting some pretty extreme levels. And, uh, you know, yeah, you can continue pushing in that into that extreme type of environment. But uh, I think we're getting very close. All right. So keep an eye on that. Keep your uh, keep your guard up. OK, let's take a look at uh, one of the indicators we look at uh, on a daily basis, and that is the percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average in the S&P 500. So if I pull up that index, let me go over to this view. It's a little different, a little better. OK, so what have I got here? I've got uh, 20 on the lower level and then I've got a, a lighter line here for 30. So I've kind of created a zone here between 20 and 30 up here between 70 and 80. Well, you know, many times the market does get well above 80 and, you know, it doesn't stay there real long. Uh, and sometimes it only gets into that zone. OK, so like back here, you know, uh, you know, last year just punched around in that zone. But uh, many times it does get above. And here we are. I mean, where do we close Friday? We closed 82.7 percent. So just when we thought this was getting ready to break down and roll over, it snaps back up to that extreme. Now, this is the highest close on this uh, indicator since back back here on July 12th. And it closed at 83.67. And, uh, you know, and then we had some of the, you know, the movement here in April when we bounced around and we were a lot higher coming off that really intense move in January, that intense move in January and February, getting all the way up here, hitting 90. So yes, can it go even higher? Yes, just like I just talked about on the index, on the NASDAQ composite. Can it could push a little bit higher? Yeah, but we are getting extended. So we keep an eye on this as you know, one of many things that we look at on a regular basis. OK, so let's take a look at the semiconductors. We're going to look at the start off with the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. OK, so this is the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index and it continues to push higher. It closed at a new all time high, too. So, you know, we're seeing divergence on these indicators also. OK, but we're watching to see do we start to break down? I mean, here you saw it and you got a little bit of a breakdown here, but we didn't get any follow through. OK. Same thing back here. So we're, we're definitely getting extended. Uh, let's take a look at the semiconductor SMH, the ETF. OK, so what really caught my eye here with the uh, SMH ETF, it's yeah, it's pushing the new highs just like on the SOX index. But this little wedge pattern here at the end is a little clearer. It seems to jump out at you a little bit more. It's going to be interesting to see if this is a little bit of an ending type pattern to the entire move here. So that's the picture on the semiconductors again, watching for them to break down, watching for them to roll over. Uh, we're getting the divergence just like we're getting on, on the other indices. All right, that's it for this weekend. We'll see what uh, happens here this coming week. And, you know, Monday's a holiday, so we got a little bit of a holiday shortened week this week, only four days of trading. Everyone have a, a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.